Hi guys, it's Katie. I'm gonna walk through the garden. We got some rain this morning. We actually had like a week of rain. Um, so there's some things I haven't even looked at so much because uh, I haven't been out here. But I thought we'd take, uh, take you along while I look through the garden. Here's my fig. I put on um, a few leaves and then it just kind of went crazy. You can see I have some like entire new branches, which is really nice. There's another green one, so that's really nice. It's doing really, really well. Got my bay plant here. I got some transplants. This one needs some water, even though it rained on it. I think it was, uh, did nothing got to the soil here, so I'll have to water these. I actually want to plant these today. These are mostly, um, well, they're all peppers and tomatoes. Two sweet peppers, one hot pepper, and two tomatoes. Here's a look at the hardy kiwi. And then my peony bush here has been blooming beautifully, though it looks like there's some powdery mildew going on. Here are the grapes, putting on tons of leaves and branches and little grape clusters. If you've been following the garden for the last for several years, this has been the, the grapes always look good and they always grow really well, but then they get a like a fungus on them. Here in the corner I had a little fig and it didn't come back so I bought a rhubarb. I have another rhubarb over there but it grows green and I really want red rhubarb so I got this um, as a plant. That other one I grew from a seed so I guess it's kind of variable whether you'll get a red or green so if you want a guaranteed red you have to buy a plant. So I bought this plant. This and this and this are all new leaves since I put it in just a, about two weeks ago I guess some volunteer marigolds coming up here that we're gonna let go and I think this might, might be a gladiolus we got some bulbs from the Dollar Tree actually to put my daughter's garden I think my husband put one of the extra ones there I'm down here look at her garden um, we put in a few new things some of these things were in before but we put the gladiolus bulbs in the four corners so three four of them are up all four of them are up from the Dollar Tree so that wasn't bad and then her petunias are doing really, really well. I'm actually surprised. I thought they were gonna die. They didn't look good. We bought them kind of on a whim and didn't put them in right away, um, but they have just perked up and put on a lot of growth and been flowering like crazy. We got beets in here. And then she got these are violas or Johnny Jump Ups. She put some radishes in here, which, yeah, see her radishes are bolting too. My radishes bolted and they're not making radishes. They just went straight to bolting. So we had a couple like 90, 92 degree, degree days. And then we got this Dahlia also at Lidl. Okay, here's this garden. Oh. I got onions coming up, onion sets coming up. I mainly grow the onion sets just for the green. So I'll come out here and um, cut them with scissors and they'll grow back. There's some weeds in here too. And then these are the volunteer kale. I put some more radishes in here. And then here's a big bundle of um, volunteer tomatoes, like from fruit dropping, and then uh, millions of seeds in a tomato, so a million little seedlings come up. This is the colored green plant. I never pulled it out, and it's gone to seed. So um, I think I'm just going to let this stay here, kind of as a placeholder, and kind of see if I can harvest these colored green seeds. Up here in this bed, I think I told you I put seeds here and I couldn't remember what it was and I think I put carrots here and this one I think is a carrot. I put a ton of seeds in here. I think I put like uh, maybe 16 seeds and this is the only one that's come up so I don't know if more are coming or if they're just not going to come up. Those were brand new seeds. Most of my other seeds are pretty old but those were seeds from this year. So I don't know. Maybe I'm not very good at growing carrots. I've never tried them before. And then here's some Swiss chard. I started these indoors and then put them out and then we had like 90 degree days. So they're starting to catch up. This one's yellow. I love the yellow Swiss chard. Mostly you get these red and pink ones and then occasionally you'll get a, um, a yellow one. So I really want this one to do well. This Swiss chard was a transplant. It's um, probably quadrupled in size since I bought it. But I wanted to kind of get started because my seedlings, I thought these had died. So I got a yellow Swiss chard here. Here's some more radishes. I think maybe radishes aren't going to do well for me this year. There, it looks like they're getting eaten up, which I usually never have problems with pests on radishes. I put kale seeds in there, but they came up and then we had those 90 degree days and they died. Here I put some cilantro. 
And this took a while to come up, but now it looks really nice. So um, it's something that kind of comes and goes quickly because of the heat, but I'd like to have it, you know, it would be nice to have it because every time I buy it in the store it goes bad before I have a chance to use it. Oh, here I see another carrots. So maybe I should need to give it a little more time for the carrots. But they were one of the first seeds I put in. Over here is some basil that I started indoors under the lights and then um, when I put them out here I just threw a few more, this is a weed, a few more seeds so they're just starting to come up but I like to grow the basil really densely like this. I, I learned that by reading a forum years ago and that's how I always do my um, my basil now and it always does really well. <clears throat> here I have some more Swiss chard that I put in by seed. There I have some yellow ones. I love the yellow ones. I don't know why. They all taste the same. And they all grow the same. Okay, this bed, these radishes, like I said, they've all bolted. This one's already putting a flower out. Um, but I didn't hardly get any radishes. Uh, just, I guess just bad timing. And then this here, they came up in clusters, uh, like I showed you those tomato seedlings. Um, so I thought maybe some fruit was dropped and they're coming up and I don't know maybe this is tomatillo or maybe it's just a weed like maybe it was a seed pod from a weed I don't really recognize this it could be tomatillo I don't know I'm just gonna let them sit here mostly because I'm too lazy to rip them out but I do want to make sure they're not tomatillo because you can see how they come up in these clusters this is what it looks like when they first come up and now it looks like this so I don't know um, and then there's some more of it down there here I have sugar snap peas that I planted along here. Still got a ways to go before they go up there. And then here is my lettuce, starting to um, harvest this, and it's really nice. I love having lettuce in the garden. And those are all radishes. Uh, these, also I put these seeds in, these are kale. And these are one of the first seeds I put in. And you can see how small they are compared to those volunteer kale. These are a different variety, but, um, I mean they should be growing faster than this. These are so tiny and small. The other kale over here, over there, I've actually like taken all of the leaves off twice and there's just a few plants so it's not a ton but it's enough to make a green smoothie two different times and it's still growing back whereas these are still this small. There's just a few radishes I pulled up out of all of these radishes. These were just about the only radishes that I found that didn't um, bolt. This one you can see it's starting to go. It's when uh, the, this is a bulb, right? So it will send up this long shoot to make the seed pod. So you can see how this one's much taller than all the rest of them. So this one was just starting to. So maybe I can save this one. This one also is just starting to. You can see there where it's just starting to send up a thing. And this one too. I thought I cut them a little early, but this one looks like it's getting ready to bolt too. And the problem when they bolt is they get really hard and really hot and really bitter and they're just no good. So all these were growing wonderfully and then all it takes is one hot day. Luckily the lettuce didn't bolt because one hot day can ruin a batch of lettuce too. So that's doing good. These were um, a little bit farther behind. So as long as I watered them, I guess they didn't, uh, didn't feel threatened <laughs> and need to go to seed. Here I got beets. They're looking really nice. I'm going to thin these soon. I wanted to let the greens get a little bigger. I can put the greens in um, smoothies or in juice through my juicer or you can eat them in salads too. So I'll thin them so that the beets that I want to grow for beet root will have more room and then I can use the greens. Here spinach is already going to seed too. It goes really fast too. Just one hot day like I was saying. But we've been enjoying this. I've had um, several omelets and several green juices and green smoothies with this. Um, there's another Swiss chard in here too. I don't know if I planted that on purpose or if it's like a volunteer or something. There's a maple tree in here. And then I put an onion set here. And then I started a second um, planting of spinach, but it might be too late in the year. There's another onion set. Here are some volunteer tomatoes and they look about 500 times better than the ones that I started by seed. Uh, I'm so tempted to just let them grow. But I have another one there too. And then I got a bunch in this next bed I'll show you. So I kind of want to let them grow because they're doing so well. But at the same time, I have no idea what they are. They could just be 
um, volunteer from the compost and if they're from like a you know a seed from a tomato that I bought at the supermarket I don't usually buy tomatoes at the supermarket but it could be um, you know a non-viable seed like it could be make a beautiful plant and make no fruit so it's kind of a, a risky a risky move same with this thing I saw this come up and I thought it was some kind of squash or cucumber or something looking like it might be some kind of squash looks like it already has some flowers and I was kind of excited to have a squash plant see another tomato here but then um, over here I'll show you there's a bunch more coming up so now I'm kind of wondering if it might be like a pumpkin or it could be from like an acorn squash that I bought it's hard to know so again do I let this take over this whole bed and to find out that it's some kind of like inedible gourd or something or something that's not going to make any fruit squash here don't do well we get a lot of those uh, vine borers so it's possible that I could let this grow and then it just dies here in a few weeks anyway um, and then more beets here's that other tomato seedling but I mean it looks awesome so there's another one the beets will come out so I could just put my tomatoes and peppers here I think this open spot here is where I'm gonna put um, at least one of my peppers so the spinach and the beets will be coming out soon this bed I still need to get some dirt I did put some of my homemade compost in here and it's just like teeming with seeds so all of these um, volunteers are coming up and I just don't know which to keep and which not to keep I still need to get some dirt in that side I think I'm gonna take the dirt from the center here and push it to the back so I can at least start planting in that and then I'll just have to put a few bags here in the center but I don't want to not be able to use this bed because it doesn't have dirt in it so at one point it was all like a third of the way filled up you can't really uh, plant in that so I kind of shoveled it all this way and then I'll probably shovel it that way at least get started these are volunteer kale just like the other kale looks like I have some leaf miners and I did pull off one green worm um, already so those are my arch nemesis <laughs> but I'm gonna let these grow here I'll probably move those other kale here this is red Russian kale it's one of my favorite kales and that other smaller seedlings are the blue curly scotch kale so here's a whole bunch more of those um, same seedlings that are probably some kind of pumpkin or squash or something and then there's just millions of tomato seedlings now this bed and this bed are both new so the volunteers are kind of hard to know where they're from because it's probably from compost that I dug in because there wasn't anything in these beds last year because they weren't here last year um, I also put these are some Swiss chard that I started under the lights this one's starting to look really nice and then these are more tomatoes and there was one here that I thought might even be a pepper of some kind over here so you can see all these are tomatoes of some sort but this one I think might be a pepper of some kind but again it could be uh, you know a bell pepper or it could be something that drops seed from the garden um, I just don't know and right there that's another kale seedling coming up so I'd like to I would love to have a bed all of greens here is where I put the asparagus I really didn't think anything was going to come up the ones I got they were from Lowe's they were really dry and shrivelly but they were a good price they were like four dollars for five crowns and I put them in here nothing really came up and I gave up on them and I ordered some more from a more reputable <laughs> gardening place um, and then they're not coming in the mail so hopefully they're not like stuck somewhere getting overheated in the mail but um, I did have one asparagus come up it came up it looked just like an asparagus and then it opened up so at least one of them is still alive which is at least a good start but the other crowns that I ordered they need to come in soon because I need to put them in the ground before it gets too too hot and then here you can see some volunteer dill but I don't see any other spots of um, the asparagus there should be one right around here and one around right around here and right around there and then one in the middle so you can see where I dug in the, the compost a little bit for them some weeds in here and stuff here's another really nice looking dill so it looks like it got broke so we'll be using that in salads. Some newer dill volunteers coming up here. This is garlic. Um, I got these lettuce transplants. This one looks like I can start picking off of it. Those are onion sets. There's some more um, clusters of tomatoes. I did have tomatoes in this bed last year, so I could probably guess what these are, but those other ones I have no idea. 
And then there's something going on. I don't know, some kind of mushroom or fungus is growing all over. If you can see these sort of brownish balls. <laughs> so those are the garden beds. I still, embarrassingly, have not mulched over here. The uh, apple tree, I never got around to spraying it. And there is rust on it. So it's going to be a fail for that again this year. There's a fig tree. My husband cut off the, the older dead wood, but it's coming up really nicely from the base. This is the raspberry bush gone crazy. We got some more bamboo from down the way. But there are some good looking raspberries coming. We need to figure out some sort of um, netting situation or else these will just go become free bird food. It looks like a lot of raspberries coming, which is nice. And then the hops are going up the trellis. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Hops up the trellis, and it looks like they're taking over that tomato cage, so we're gonna have to pull that out before this just becomes a vining jungle. Concord grapes. Strawberries have been making fruit, but pretty much the slugs have been getting them. Um, nice fruit with slug bites taken out of them. Oh, see. oh, that one looks really nice. Some good ones here. We're gonna pick them so they don't become slug food. It's a nice one too. That one probably could go another day to ripen up, but I'm gonna take it so that I don't lose out. And they've been setting off a lot of runners. And I went and I pulled the runners and I stuck them underground so that they would start to root. You can see this one sending roots down. So a week of rain has helped that. And there's more strawberries back here. I have to send my daughter down here. She's an expert strawberry picker. Although she only really brings back about 25% of what she picks. There's the other fig tree. Coming up from the bottom and from the uh, the old growth. There's a whole lot of weeds in here. But there's some um, long beans came up. I thought maybe we put them in too early, but they look good. And my husband was saying there was um, some ground cherry volunteers. I'm not sure what they look like. Unless he's thinking they're these, but that looks like my weed. So maybe my weed of ground cherry volunteers, or maybe they're tomatillos. I think they're in a similar family, so that would make sense that their seedlings look the same. Here he has some radishes. See, this one's a really good example of it going to seed. Just sends that center stalk up and starts to make a flower. Here's another one with a flower. He put in some black radishes, and I haven't seen any come through yet, so I'd like to see them. Oh, and that. They're not morbid or anything. But we found this um, squirrel skull. So my husband has it here as sort of a warning to the other squirrels. I thought it was pretty cool that we found that here right in our yard. More long beans here along the back to go up this trellis. which is asparagus burned out. I think that's everything. Um, show you the mint bed. We got some, well we got a ton of rain and the mint bed got some spots all over. I'm not exactly sure what what it is, if it's a pest or if it's a fungus or something. See that? But I'm not really worried about it because so much of this grows way more than we'd ever use. So I'm sure a couple of dry days and this will be growing back better. And then I got a new um, peppermint plant, although it looks like something's been digging in here. I pulled the tops off of these and you can see how it's growing out either side. So that encourages it to bush out, but then that cutting should root really well. So I put them in here, but it looks like a critter or somebody's dug them up. I um, took some other cuttings and I'm rooting under the lights downstairs. So I'd like to get you know multiple plants and fill this up, especially since the one I bought last year didn't make it. I wish this mint would die and the peppermint would grow, but it's not the way things work. Like somebody had an accident, crashed their big wheel. And then here I pulled a bunch of this um, rhubarb out 
the hose was like intertwined in there. <laughs> so I pulled the hose out and in in the process pulled up a bunch of the uh, rhubarb, but it grew back and you can see it's green. It tastes the same and it's perfectly edible and everything. It's just when you stew it or turn it into pies or something, it, it looks like olive green. And then if you try to do like strawberry rhubarb desserts, the red from the strawberries and the green from the rhubarb makes like brown. It's not pleasant. And that is horseradish. Alright, I think that's everything for this uh, garden update. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. I'll see you guys next month for June. Thanks for watching. Bye!